back to the channel. My name is Doug if you're new here. This is Reggae Spinout number two, second installment in a series of recent arrivals to my music collection, listens from the shelves, all with an accent on the reggae genre, one near and dear to me, to my music collection. Some sad news on the reggae front this week, as news came out the other day that Bob Marley and the Wailers keyboardist Tyrone Downey has passed away. Uh, you will know his keyboard riffs from songs like Three Little Birds from the Exodus LP, and there he is right there, Tyrone Downey, I think joined the band around the Rastaman Vibration album, lent his keyboard licks to many of the Bob Marley and the Wailers classics from the late 1970s. Uh, rest in peace to Tyrone Downey and condolences to his family and friends. In the first video in this series, I was showing a recently released dub album of vintage dubs from the Fashion Records label out of the UK, original and vintage dubs from Fashion Records. Uh, since then, I picked up another compilation of the Fashion Records label, which ran from the early 1980s uh, right up until the late 1990s, I believe. Style and Fashion two-disc compilation from Soul Jazz Record. Came out a few years ago. Hadn't got around to picking this one up yet. These kind of various artists' compilations are a great way to get into the Fashion Records label. Uh, very high quality label with a lot of good songs from a lot of different artists in many different styles. Uh, this compilation touches on many of them from soulful lovers rock to more harder edged dance hall DJing. Style and fashion. Crucial collection of tunes from Fashion Records out of London. Uh, spin from the shelves just this morning, one from the archives, Reggae in Jazz by Tommy McCook. This came out on the Pressure Sounds label in 2013. Mummy label there. Uh, this actually came out originally 1976 on the Eve label in the UK. It's basically a reggae instrumental album. The jazz in the title is a bit tenuous. Uh, tenor saxophonist Tommy McCook, who's the leader here, is blowing his saxophone lines over uh, pre-recorded backing tracks produced by Buster Riley, brother of the more well-known Winston Riley of the Techniques label, a uh, big reggae and dance hall producer from the 1970s right through to the 90s and 2000s, Winston Riley. So basically reggae instrumentals, jazz a little bit disingenuous in the title, jazz certainly part of Tommy McCook's DNA, part of reggae's DNA as a whole, but Basically, reggae instrumentals here with saxophone lead, some organ, and the usual cast of players on here. Sly and Robbie, Ranchy McLean, and Chinna Smith on guitar. Chinna Smith, a certain jazz inflection in some of his guitar playing as well. Tommy McCook himself, of course, founding member of the Scatolites, legend in Jamaican music. Uh, not terrific sound quality on this release, I must say. I think I remember it getting some criticism on that score when it came out. Sounds a bit compressed, but nice instrumental reggae album. Not gonna change your life, but good to listen to.
arrival to the dub side of my reggae collection is Zion Dub, sometimes credited to producer Carl Campbell. Uh, this was originally released circa 1978 on the Carl's Records label out of Brooklyn, New York. This is basically an exact replica from 2017, I believe originating out of France, Zion Dub by Carl Campbell, who only ever had one other album release, very little known about him. Uh, the other one is called 357 Magnum Dub uh, in combination with producer Winston Riley. This is obviously recorded in Jamaica by session stalwarts like Robbie Shakespeare, Sly Dunbar holding down the rhythm section along with Tommy McCook on horns, Earl Chinna Smith on guitars, Keith Sterling and Augustus Pablo on piano. Some very familiar rhythms on here. The title track itself was originally done in Jamaica as Darker Shade of Black uh, with a keyboard riff inspired by the Beatles' Norwegian Wood uh, by Jackie Matu originally, redone many times over that. Uh, the classic hot milk rhythm also appears on here. So a few well-known rhythms. I think Barrington Levy's Bounty Hunter is also on here, which must have been very new at the time this came out. Uh, in somewhat of the style of some other dub albums of the time, Carl Campbell has added Master of Ceremonies style spoken intros to all of the tracks by a DJ called Mikey Jarrett, who is another expatriate Jamaican, by then based in New York City. Uh, some similar albums of the time that do this are Master of Ceremony dub by Bunny Lee, also featuring Sly and Robbie. So very little info about this, but obviously just tracks recorded in Jamaica, acquired under unknown circumstances by Carl Campbell. Uh, he may have added some overdubs to it. There's some syndrome boops and bleeps going on in the mix. Uh, this was somewhat of the fashion of the time. Another New York-based Jamaican, Brad Osborne, was doing much the same thing out of his Brad's Record Den record store in the Bronx, which gave rise to the Clock Tower label. People wanted ex to hear exclusive mixes that they couldn't hear anywhere else. So these producers would acquire music in Jamaica, add their own little overdubs and stuff to it. And then if people wanted to hear that version, they had to come to them, to their sound system or to their label to get that version. So much the same sense of exclusivity perhaps going on with this release. Zion Dub, uh, artifact from the classic era of dub in the late 1970s. The war in the New York, yeah? This is a dub, yeah, bad! Hit it from the top, yeah, Papa Carmen, and feed it, yeah, for you, the killer! Boom! Boom. Singer Sam Carty left a sparse yet intriguing trail of recordings in the 1970s and very early 1980s of part Indian extraction. He had been a university student in Kingston in the 1970s when he came into contact with Lee Scratch Perry, then just getting going on his Black Ark studio. Two of Carty's earliest songs would appear on the obscure Perry compilation Dip presents The Upsetter, released only in the UK in 1975 on Dennis Harris's Dip label. Uh, very rare originals. This is a recent reissue that's been doing the rounds on the Dip label. The songs were I Don't Mind, uh, Reflective, uh, Musing on Thoughts of Mortality, on Making the Most of the Time You Have on This Earth, To uh, Do Some Good for Your Fellow Humans subject that's been resonating with me lately. Also, Life is a Flower, uh, showcasing Cardi's high, sort of a dreamy, sensitive vocals. However, the song Cardi was most associated with to reggae aficionados would come about when he was watching a 1950s Bollywood movie. 
One of the songs caught his attention. He brought it to Lee Perry, who was intrigued enough to record it over a frothing, almost psychedelic black arc rhythm track. The song became known as Milte Hiakinen, aka Bird in Hand, from a 1950s Bollywood musical adapted. This is a 10 inch single on the Raka Shaka label out of Japan, released several years ago. The song was not actually released at the time, becoming more well known later on, though a partial dub mix of it would appear on Return of the Super Ape as Bird in Hand, with some traces of Sam Carty's vocals still in evidence. Following that, not much would be heard from Sam Carty until his one and only LP would appear in the early 1980s, uh, somewhat puzzlingly titled International Slackness. Slackness, uh, at the time, a movement toward rude or sexually explicit lyrics. This album is anything but. It is taking a stance against that sort of thing. Uh, lots of roots and culture, very righteous lyrics on here. Uh, Cardi had got involved with a show band called The Astronauts, was doing the Jamaican Festival song rounds. So some songs on this album have traces of that jolly, upbeat, festival song kind of feel. It appeared on the Nura label. While others are deep roots, this was produced by Rodguel Sinclair, aka Blackbeard, brother of DJ Tapazuki, not to be confused with uh, UK producer Dennis Bovell, sometimes also known as Blackbeard. This is the Jamaican Blackbeard, Rodguel Sinclair, uh, quite well known for some of his own roots productions and on the Nura label. Uh, some songs also on here have kind of a rock, 70s rock feeling on here. Somewhat of an uneven mix, but an intriguing album with definitely some roots nuggets on here. Africa We Wanna Go, War Complex, definitely taking some social and uh, conscious stands on the lyrics. Well, jam rock, more jolly, more upbeat, the festival, annual festival song vibes that are so popular in Jamaica and would be the one and only album by Sam Carty, uh, a name not known to many, but in, uh, left behind an intriguing body of recordings. <laughs> In 2004, the reggae world was saddened to hear of the sudden passing of Clement Seymour Coxon Dodd, we call him, or C.S. Dodd, founder of the iconic Studio One label, unquestionably one of the most important figures in Jamaican music, the Studio One catalog of unfathomable importance to the Jamaican music scene to the development of all the different styles of Jamaican music. Uh, in 2004, Mr. Dodd had been in the midst of releasing a spate of new albums from Studio One with many of the veteran artists associated with the label. These were new recordings done on original Studio One rhythm tracks. Uh, some, like the Wailing Souls Square Deal, received good notice at the time, but most have kind of uh, fallen between the cracks in between the rather uh, uh, cheaply done graphics and printing belying the musical contents within. As I said, original Studio One rhythm tracks, in many cases uh, reprising old songs, but new performances by veteran artists. Winston Jarrett's Crucial Times was another one that came out at that time, recently acquired the vinyl of this one. Winston Jarrett, singer going back to the 1960s, actually lives in, still active, lives around Seattle now, I believe. 
I had an opportunity to buy some of his personal 45s several years ago, walked into a record store in Seattle, owner pulled out a clutch of 45s from behind the counter, said they had come from Winston Jarrett himself, didn't end up buying any of them though. Another one I recently acquired from the same series, another veteran singer going back to the 1960s, Errol Dunkley, Love is Amazing. Again, both these albums mix of roots and culture themes with some more romantic offerings, new recordings done on the original Studio One rhythm tracks, Studio One productions, some of the very last Cox and Dodd productions in association with his son, Courtney Dodd, engineering. So these will never be uh, hip, never make some cool playlists, probably never be treated to uh, splattered vinyl, vinyl me please, record of the month pressings, but classic offerings, some of the last true Studio One productions. Also in 2004, the UK Soul Jazz Records label was quick to pay tribute to Mr. Dodd shortly after his passing. Uh, they had uh, just probably a couple of years before begun reissuing some of his back catalog in their long running series of compilations, which continues to this day. And in 2004, they issued Studio One Classics. Uh, not exactly a greatest hits per se, though many of the songs on here were. Uh, 18 tracks, I think, on the album came on this rather nondescript black cover. This is my original CD from 2004. Uh, in their usual style, spanning uh, the different styles of Jamaican music, all Studio One classics here, a few ska tunes from the 1960s, with uh, the Scatolites doing the more humorous El Pussycat Ska, uh, the Wailers classic Simmer Down, and then the full-on, full-barrel blazing Ska of Don Drummond with Confucius uh, along the way, passing through some rock steady, uh, through reggae, through roots, and into early dance hall with Michigan and Smiley. Uh, they're even slipping in an extended mix of their classic rub-a-dub style. Essential soul jazz compilation. Again, not greatest hits per se, but just a selection of absolute timeless, deathless classics. Every reggae fan uh, worth their salt knows and loves, but nice to have them all together in great sound quality. For Record Store Day of 2022, Soul Jazz put out a new edition of that one. I'd never got it on vinyl at the time, so I had to go for it. Uh, new cover art, uh, putting the more marketable Whalers front and center. Fair enough, because they do have a song on here, though the actual photo is from a later period than their Studio One Day and this is on purple vinyl studio one classics the name says it all classic compilation let your love float like river jordan For today guys thanks for joining me i've been joined by mission the pup here stay tuned for the next reggae spin out episode and cheers